Hi everyone, welcome back to Feeding Raven Doodles, a pet parent's guide to nutrition. Today's topic is how to find reliable nutrition information. Now as pet parents, we all want to do what's best for our pet's health. And with a wealth of information out there, especially on the internet, it's really hard to find truly reliable resources. It's hard to differentiate whose advice is sound and whose isn't. So that's what I'm gonna help you out with today. In general, veterinarians should be the go-to resource for pet parents for all medical and nutritional advice because they are truly the only ones who have been trained and educated in these fields. Veterinary specialists in nutrition are the gold standard for nutrition advice because they have undergone extensive education and training in the subject. When you're evaluating a resource to see if it's good advice or bad, you're going to want to take a look at who's giving this advice. Is it an expert or is it a pretender? In general, like I said, veterinarians or other professionals who have extensive nutrition education are reliable. Websites, blogs, or books written by board-certified veterinary nutritionists should be the go-to resource for pet parents. And lay people, or those who do not have formal nutrition education, are going to be unreliable resources. Your pet's usual veterinarian should be your number one resource when you have any questions about your pet's health or nutrition. They are the ones that know your pet the best, they have a good relationship with you, and they can help you make these educated decisions regarding your pet's health and nutrition. If they are uncomfortable giving you nutrition advice or if they don't answer all of your questions, they can always refer you to a board-certified veterinary nutritionist. A board-certified veterinary nutritionist is going to be the gold standard, like I said earlier, regarding all nutrition information. So these experts know the most about nutrition in the field and how it relates to pet health and life stages and all different health conditions. Board-certified veterinary nutritionists have undergone their DVM training, so they are veterinarians. They have undergone a residency in nutrition. They have done research and become published, and they have taken and passed a board-certifying examination by the American College of Veterinary Nutrition, so they know their stuff. Veterinary technician specialists in nutrition are like the veterinary technician or veterinary nurse version of a board-certified veterinary nutritionist. Veterinary technician specialists in nutrition have gone and gotten their CVT, RVT, or LVT, depending on the state, and then they have undergone three additional years of training in nutrition and taken and passed a, an examination so that they can call themselves a veterinary nutrition specialist. So they actually know a ton more about nutrition than their uh, veterinary technician colleagues and even some veterinarians. So veterinary technician specialists in nutrition are a great resource for nutrition information. PhD or MS nutritionists have undergone extensive training in nutrition science after they have completed a bachelor's degree and they're great resources for nutrition science um, in general. However, their advice may be a little less patient-based and a little more science-based, but they are still great nutrition resources. Pet store employees are extremely unreliable sources of nutrition information, although they are the ones that most often are the ones that are going to talk to pet parents in person about nutrition. Pet store employees often have no nutrition training except for what the pet store gives them and they are paid by that pet store to sell products. So usually pet store employees are told to promote the products that sell the most and are the most expensive um, so that they can earn the pet store as much money as possible. Salespeople that represent certain pet food companies are also usually unreliable sources of nutrition information because they don't have that formal education. And so whatever the pet food company tells them to say is what they're going to relate to pet owners. Um, and they are paid by that pet food company again, so they can make claims about the pet food um, that may or may not be true. Breeders, trainers, and groomers, while 
might, while they might have extensive experience handling and caring for pets, communicating with pet owners, and they might be very, very good at their jobs, they just aren't qualified to give nutritional advice. They don't have that formal training. Unless they do have that formal training, they shouldn't be giving advice about nutrition. Some veterinarians who may claim to be experts in the field of nutrition, um, but routinely give advice that contradicts the AVMA or the American Veterinary Medical Association's um, guidelines or the World's Small Animal Veterinary Asso Association's guidelines are going to be unreliable sources of nutrition information. As a pet owner, it might be difficult for you to determine if a veterinarian falls into this category. Um, so try and figure out uh, what pet food companies veterinarians endorse, uh, listen to their medical advice, and then compare that against the AVMA and the Wasava guidelines and see if they follow. If they don't match up, it might be wise not to follow this veterinarian's advice. In general, websites ending in .gov, .edu, or .org are going to be science-based and employ professionals, so they are reliable sources of information most of the time. However, it is always good to check the credentials of those posting all nutrition information. ACVN.org, or the home of the American College of Veterinary Nutrition, has a great page for pet owners, uh, frequently asked questions, as well as resources for finding and setting up consults with board-certified veterinary nutritionists. AAVN.org, or the American Academy of Veterinary Nutrition, also has a great resources page for pet owners all around the world. NutritionTechs.com is the home of the veterinary technician nutrition specialists and it has a great resources page with a lot of different reading materials for both pet parents and pet, pet professionals. Wasava.org or the home of the World Small Animal Veterinary Association's Global Nutrition Committee has extensive resources on nutrition for practicing veterinarians and pet parents all around the world. So their page on nutrition has extensive uh, PDF documents and links to different sources for uh, nutrition around the world. PetNutritionAlliance.org is made up of board certified veterinary nutritionists, veterinary technician, nutrition specialists, and other DVMs, and they have great resources for pet owners and veterinarians like cal calorie calculators, diet comparisons, and much more. VetNutrition.tufts.edu is the home of the Pet Foodology blog that is run by three board certified veterinary nutritionists at Tufts University College of Veterinary Medicine. They have a great blog that covers a ton of different material and it's geared just towards pet owners, so it's a great resource for pet parents. AFCO.org is going to be the Association of American Feed Control Officials, and they have guidelines for pet food manufacturers as well as resources for pet parents um, with frequently asked questions sections and ingredient definitions and much more. FDA.gov has the Centers for Veterinary Medicine, which controls and regulates all pet food manufacturers in the United States. They have the authority to inspect, fine, and recall pet foods, and they also have frequently asked questions section for pet owners as well as uh, links to outside resources. The CDC.gov has a pet health section that's very extensive, as well as a small section on pet food, so definitely check that out as well. And then PetFoodInstitute.org has a lot of owner-friendly resources and is very user-friendly. It's a very attractive website and it covers many topics and even has a blog for pet owners. Blogs, pet food rating websites, or other .com websites are usually run by lay people who have no formal nutrition education. So they're gonna be unreliable sources of nutrition information. Always look for an about section on a website to see the owner's credentials or education. And if they don't have any formal education or if they don't provide this information for you, you're not gonna to wanna to follow their advice because it's usually not based in science. <laughs> 
Nutrition and Disease Management for Veterinary Technicians and Nurses, written by Ann Bordinger and Kara Burns, is a great resource for both pet professionals and pet parents. It is written by two veterinary technician specialists in nutrition, and it has a lot of short and easy to read comprehensive chapters on veterinary nutrition, so it is pet owner friendly. I even use this book to write a lot of my material for Feeding Raven Doodles. Another book that's a great resource um, is Small Animal Clinical Nutrition. This is the third edition of the book, but it has the fifth edition out now. Um, and it is very thick and long, um, but it is a comprehensive resource for everything that's related to nutrition. It is geared a little bit more towards pet professionals and has a lot of sciencey jargon in it, um, but it is an excellent resource as well. Books written by lay people or non-veterinarians are again going to be core sources of nutrition information. Anybody can publish a book without having it fact-checked first, and unfortunately a lot of people do this. So stay away from books, especially cookbooks, that are written by lay people or non-veterinarians because they can often have even harmful advice um, within their pages. Books written by veterinarians who claim to be experts but are truly not experts are also going to be unreliable sources of information. And again, you're going to want to check out what advice those veterinarians give in their books um, and compare that to the AVMA policies and WASAVA guidelines to see if they match up. Always check an author's credentials, even if they are a doctor of veterinary medicine, because Anybody can write a book again, and uh, it, it's really hard to fact check some information that might be out there. Thank you so much for watching this how-to video on finding reliable nutrition information. I hope it helped clear up any questions you might have had about nutrition advice in person, on the internet, or within text. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends, and definitely check out that description below where I'm going to give you all the links to the websites and books that I used to make, make references for this video. Again, leave a comment down below if you've got any additional questions for me, or if you have suggestions for future videos. And next time, we're going to be talking about how to calculate your pet's calorie needs. Goodbye.